My name is Tamara Wu, I'm the co-founder and CEO of Liberty Society, a fashion social brand that empowers refugee women. I was also a Miss Indonesia, East Java, last year. And right after going back from school at the States, I started this company when I was 21 years old. So we empower refugee women through the upskilling opportunities, loving community, and also access to the market. So women who aren't previously able to get a job, we are giving them trainings on how to make the job. Hi. Hi! I'm Duffy from Asian Boss. Tamara, welcome to Asa Freedom by Thank Liberty you. Society. Thank you for having us today. Nice of to course. meet you, Tamara. Do you want to go check it out? Yeah, let's okay. sure. We heard that there's something special about your brand and we were curious to find out about it. Can you please tell us what is Liberty Society? Yes, Liberty Society is a fashion brand that aims to inspire wearers by the stories that we craft, the makers behind the product and the causes that we support. We started after my journey at Miss Indonesia and then I asked my other missus, we call it, to do you want to use fashion for a greater cause? And then since then, we have partnered with a lot of different organizations. So one day I came to a learning center and I met a refugee for the first time from Sudan. She came here because she was persecuted back home. Her husband wants to put her in jail because she converted religion. I've never heard of those stories before coming in from a very secluded, comfortable background here in Indonesia and Jakarta. It touched me so much. I never really saw what slavery looks like. When you hear someone talk to you and they say my life is like prison and it's, I'm like a slave here for years, it's not a distant idea of a movie that I watch. It's actually the very lives of the people that I meet every single day. So from that, the personal motivation comes when I was in middle school, I was bullied and not feeling that I have voice to voice out for people around me. So when I see the lives of these refugees and I say they don't have a voice here, what we're trying to do is change that and give them a platform for them to share their story, a story of hope, I would say, and a story of love. And may I ask why fashion? Fashion is a great equalizer because everyone needs fashion and have fashion. Uh, Indonesia is very blessed to be one of the largest fashion exporter and producer of cotton and so forth in, in the world. So it's sort of act as an easy entryway for these women to be able to get their income from. So let me take you to our training center. This is where we usually have 20 ladies who come to the center and then they train, they sew, they eat here, have dinner. Um, here we have the machines where we usually make the neck part of the t-shirts. Okay t-shirt, shirt, or jumpsuit. It looks like a very busy day. Today. Yes, it's always a busy day at the center. We have some of our product display, everything from shirts to t-shirt. This comes from natural fibers, so natural tensile, fibers. bamboo, everything that takes less water to make. I do want to show you, for example, this is an order that we made for a customer. Oversized t-shirt. And every, the ladies does everything from cutting the t-shirt into the printing as well, inside here as well, into sewing it. How long does the lady usually work per day here? They work normally from one, from one. because they have um, kids to take care of. For example, here we have Jabir. Jabir! Hi, Jabir. <laughs> we always have kids sometimes here in the center just because they like to play or they hang out with their parents. Nah, Davi, jadi kita lagi training buat cutting. We are training them how to cut the fabric. So these are, for example, it's for the sleeve part. Mm -hmm. That part is for the neck part. And then we're making a long dress. So we have an order with a customer. And one of the skills that they haven't yet learned is how to make a dress. So some of these ladies are just training again and growing their skills to make a dress. This is Soraya. Soraya is one of the seamstress here. Mm. She already have a lot of experience from her country before. Bisa bahasa Indonesia ya? Yeah, bisa. <laughs> Sudah berapa lama tinggal di Indonesia? 
Saya udah tujuh tahun. Tujuh tahun. Iya. Makanya bahasa Indonesia-nya lancar ya? Iya, alhamdulillah. <laughs> udah berapa lama menjahit? Saya kan dari waktu dulu tinggal di Iran. Terus saya tujuh tahun udah jahit. Biasanya bikin apa aja? Biasanya t-shirt. T-shirt? Iya. Hari ini lagi bikin? Iya, hari ini kita bikin yang dress buat wanita. Dress yang di Iran bedanya apa? Dress yang di Iran kan eh, beda itu, Iran kan muslim semuanya kan. Pasti itu ada pakai hijab, tapi itu dressnya beda kan. Pasti harus eh, panjang semuanya. Tapi di sini ada pendek, nah, nah itu ya. Di Iran cuman enggak boleh eh, pakai yang pendek. Itu semuanya harus dipanjang. Kalau yang dikangenin dari Iran apa? Dikangenin cuma keluarga. Keluarganya? Ya, keluarga saya lagi di Iran. Makanannya sama tempat mainnya, cuma oh, di Iran main. ada banyak tempat mainan. <laughs> <laughs> ya. Di sini ada banyak teman juga? Iya, ada banyak teman orang Indonesia sama orang Afghanistan juga banyak. Hmm. Tapi yang teman udah lama kan di Iran, di Iran semuanya. semuanya. Pasti saya kangen mereka. Selama tinggal di Indonesia, kesan pesannya gimana? Pasti saya senang, aku udah cari yang teman orang Indonesia, mereka semuanya baik-baik. Si Tamara juga udah salam kenal, dia juga baik. Pasti saya senang. From what I've seen, even though this is a working place, it feels very homey and warm. Yes, that is the mission for us at House of Freedom, where ladies can come in here and have a freedom of expression and also be able to make an income for their better life. You see them smiling, laughing, making tea, just having so much fun. But at the same time, you also see them working and being able to have purpose in their life. What is the perceptions of Indonesian towards refugee? Indonesians are scared. They're scared because they look different, they speak different, and they come from countries where mostly persecution and war happens. They look at it at the news, but what they often forget is that these people are different from the people who are the attackers themselves. That's why these refugees are fleeing here in the first place. But often people make such close association of those two people groups and they end up seeing these refugees who are here to be dangerous, they're stealing jobs away, they steal, they kill people here, whereas those never happened before. How many refugees are living in Indonesia at the moment and where do they come from? There's 14,000 refugees, 7,000 is in Jakarta and surrounding areas. Mostly they come from Middle Eastern countries or war-torn countries from Africa. Um, I would say extremist religious groups that persecute them. A lot of them know someone that have been killed or is in threat to be killed. Our refugees are mostly also the graduate master's degree, for example. They have bachelor's degree in engineering and then they come here not being able to make work or do anything, all because of the persecution that happens in their home country. How long have you been living in Indonesia? Pansolonim. May I ask, um, what, what is your biggest challenge of living here in Indonesia? What do you find difficult? I have a lot of work that we have to do with our lives. 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 به خاطری که بالاخره زندگی به چه ما بالا تکلیف ما مثلا می دو تا پسر جوان دارم برم درس بخونم این دینا مشخص شه درست شاید امروز بریم از نظر جونی مشکلی نداشته باشم ولی برای به چه ما اینا خوب نیست بعدش هم مشکل ملی که داریم این خیلی واقعا برای ما مشکل بزرگه Do you have any message for Indonesians out there for how they treat the refugees. Piyam ke bakham bodum ine ke balakhara mahroom Afghanistan ka omadam in chi ina mahroom bi farhang nabida 
اینا برای خود خود زندگی داشتم این چه از مجبوری آمدم و باید به هر که به هر دینی هسته بود دینی اعترام گیدیش داشته برای شیعه ها یک خوده مثلا فکر میکنم ما یک دین به خصوصیم یا مسلمان نیم نه واقعا شیعه هم همون مسلمان همون قرآن همون خدا همون پیغمبر دوست داره همه پیام ما بوده How do you feel about Tamara and the Liberty Society? احساسم خوب بد نیست هم یک اوقات فراغت میشه هم یک کمک میشه هم هم برخورد اینو واقعا مهربونه ملایم آدم احساس یکی بودن میکنه When the pandemic hits a lot of hospitals even in Bogor area where we're at is affected so our refugee women, I asked them, hey, do you want to make masks and face shield for these hospitals? Without even any consideration, they say, yes, I would love to help other people in that way too. So rather than them being a recipient of help, they're able to give out help meaningfully to others in this pandemic time. So they're making masks at home, they're making face shield, and then we distribute them to security guards, hospitals, and so forth. And it's meaningful for them. And what are the biggest challenges that your business is facing right now? We have a supply problem because the demand is growing, which we are very grateful for. In the sense, how do we balance their post-traumatic experiences and their tendency, their lives as women, mothers, wives, sisters, taking care of their children with the increasing work orders? So us as a company, we can't really force them to work very long hours or expect them to work as machines, per se, or as others would, but really having to be more mindful of their emotional state. Overseas market have a lot more awareness in terms of ethical fashion and sustainable fashion that we have to pay everyone uh, fairly in the supply chain process. Because of that, we pay our makers twice or three times the minimum average wage to give them living wage, but also sourcing natural fibrous products. And that costs more. A lot of the times people want good quality products that are ethical and sustainable, but they don't want to pay for it. So it's easier to convince customers outside the value that we bring and the empowerment that we are really changing the lives of 30 women in our center tangibly. Moving forward, uh, what is your goal and vision for your business? I hope that we can replicate this model into all the countries out there who are facing refugee problems. 14,000 in Indonesia, but millions displaced worldwide, and not enough solutions, sustainable solutions that are tackling their livelihood issues. Even though we're different in languages, religions, I hope people would see that they're willing to contribute to the greater society. And there's just so much beauty in their story that I wish people would see deeper from, not just from the outside perspective that they come from a war-torn country, they're coming from poverty background. Come into their house and see just the beauty and the joy in their sharing. The culture is so festive. Um, and I just hope that people see just the fullness of humanity that they're of.